Cheers to a good show. Good show. Hi there, everybody. I'm R.C. Cola. I'm Chef Delaney Joe. This is a very special cooking with R.C. Cola. As y'all might or might not know, I used to host with my sister Shasta a show called Cooking Good with the Cola Sisters. But that show is now defunct, and I'm afraid she might sue me, so I'm changing the name. So, welcome to Cooking with R.C. Cola. I'm R.C. Cola. This is my friend Delaney Joe. Yes. She just went to a fancy nutrition chef college in and Berkeley, got California. certified. Oh, in Berkeley. Yeah. Even better. So you got certified to do what? To be, uh, I'm a certified natural chef. Okay, so that means she makes everything but junk food. No junk food. No junk food, but everything else, right? Yes, no refined ingredients, mm -hmm. no... Uh, uh, best case scenario, everything is organic, local, and seasonal. Okay, so it's kind of like what macrobiotic people do. No, stuff? well, macro. I could, I could cook for a macrobiotic diet, but mm -hmm. I think it's a little too dogmatic. So I, you know, right. I just like to cook good things, mm -hmm. yummy things with lots of vegetables. And mm -hmm. well, that sounds good. Well, I tell you, we normally. On the other show I did, just cooked unhealthy whatever. Yeah. So this will be a change I of saw. pace for me. I'm used to making stuff that, you know, has some flavor, which usually includes bacon grease or some kind of meat, butter, cheese, you know, all that stuff they tell you not to eat. Well, I cook with butter. I'm not today. I'm not cooking with butter today, but I do cook with butter. Okay, so butter's okay. Butter's okay. Just not margarine, right? Just not, no, not margarine. And you just, if you're cooking with any animal product, you want to source a clean, organic, humane okay, source. Okay, so. But it's okay to eat it. It's no hormone, no, no bacon that's like a name brand. No. Okay, gotcha. All right, well, cool. Well, um, what you going to make for us? Uh, so I'm going to make a quinoa and raw kale salad with uh, some sprouted lentils that I sprouted myself. Oh, my goodness. They have cute little sprout tails coming okay. out of them. And uh, roasted cauliflower and poblano pepper soup. Mm, that sounds... I just came up with the recipe for that today. I haven't tried it yet. Oh, so, so. it's a new with virgin recipe. And if it's virgin <laughs> recipe. If it comes out bad, I'll, I'll be honest about it. Okay, we'll know. let you know. <laughs> All right, well, let me know if you need to do anything, like mm -hmm. need help or... No, do you want to show off your chart? Yeah, yeah, I want to show off my chart. So, when I was talking to Miss Delaney Joe on the telephone for many hours before we did this show, uh, you know, planning it out, Yeah. Uh, she told me that she had this stroke of genius to, to call the show... Crucify, Crucify cancer, cancer with cruciferous vegetables. Which, as you can see, with my kitchen, goes perfect. It's like, you know, meat and potatoes. Of, I know. Okay, so, anywho, I thought I'd make a little visual aid, because I know it's easier for y'all to understand things if you can see it and hear it. Um, so, the main thing you need to know about cruciferous vegetables is that... Um, they contain cancer fighting uh, chemicals you know and other nutrients and vitamins. Now, I didn't feel like writing them down. Well, I learned today that it's called glu... How do you spell it? It's spelled G-L-U-O-S-I-N-O-L-A-T-E-S. Gluosinolates. Gluosinolates. Yes, and they up... The antioxidant uh, me mechanisms in your body, it detoxes harmful chemicals and hormones. Mm -hmm. And it's especially helpful in preventing colon, prostate, lung, and breast cancer. There's a bunch of chemicals and stuff yeah. in here. And there's like lots of vitamin C and folic acid and all kinds of good stuff. 
Um, it's also very high in the soluble kind of fiber, which you need to help move things through and detoxify. Got to have yeah. all that stuff. Yes. And um, here's the thing that you need to know. I know all y'all out there ain't veggie lovers. It took me a while to come around to some of them. The higher, the, the brighter the color, the richer looking the plant is, the smellier it is, the stronger it tastes, the better it is for you. So that don't mean you need to overcook it, because if you overcook it, it's gonna stink no matter what. But you need to select firm, uh, unblemished, deeply colored cruciferous vegetables, and you need to eat them close to raw. Is, you as know. close to raw as possible. You can cook like broccoli, things like broccoli and cauliflower is actually good to cook it. You might get a little gassy if you eat broccoli That's the raw. other that thing. They can, they can make you fart. Worse than beans. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. If you eat a big old curry full of cauliflower and broccoli, watch out. I don't recommend it for a date. No. I'll tell you that. Not if you're thinking about getting laid, that's but for sure. But we're cooking with ginger today, and ginger should be really helpful for, like, digesting and helping prevent any of that gassiness. So. Yeah, so you're like robbing Peter to pay Paul. Kind yeah, of thing. it's a great digestive. <laughs> 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 All right, so anyway, just don't be afraid of, of it if it tastes a little bitter. You can get over it. You can flavor it with something that kind of masks the flavor. But, no, it has a good flavor. Yeah, and you Just, need if you cook it to death, it's not going to be. You good. need to make sure you chew it up. I learned chew this. it real good. You got to chew it because if you don't, then the chemicals that can combine to kill the cancer because there's like several that have to work together, they don't work together. You kind of have to mash them together yeah. with your tongue. You chew until your food is liquefied and digestion begins in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. I believe it. Okay, so uh, that's that's all the good stuff. And, and for most people, that's, you know, the best thing you can do is eat a bunch of this stuff. But just be, be beware. I learned this about what? cruciferous vegetables. There could be a downside. <gasps> it goiters. might cause you to have goiters. Oh, no. It causes hypothyroidism, which means you don't make enough thyroid hormone. It blocks the iodine synthesis or something like that. So if you eat a whole bunch of this and your system tends to be out of whack already, it could push you over the edge. You know what's great for counterbalancing that is what? Uh, sea vegetables. So you got to eat seaweed. Yeah, well, you can sprinkle a little bit of they sell at the at a Whole Foods, just little flakes of dulse. You won't even taste it. Just sprinkle it in there. It should help. Okay. And um, it also could interfere with the absorption of your different pharmaceuticals. So for all y'all that take, well, you should stop taking them you know, anyway. pharmaceutical drugs because you think you need them. Or poison. It could diminish the effect if you eat the vegetables in excess. That's all. That's good. That's a wonderful chart. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, just for those of y'all that don't know what a cruciferous vegetable is, it, here's some of the more common ones you might find at your grocery store or farmer's market. We want to be market. politically correct here. <laughs> uh, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, collards, cabbage, mustard, seeds, Brussels sprouts, radishes, turnips, bok choy and um, canola, believe it or not. Wow. And also arugula is another one you might find. Arugula is a really great bitter. Watercress. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to eat your bitters. They tone your liver. All right, so this is my chart. Um, see if I, I might. Is anywhere to hang it up? Oh, you know what? I'll get some tape and okay. I'll just tape it up. Should I get started? Yeah, you should get started. Uh, tapes? Okay, so first we're going to start with the cauliflower. So we have it all. Hmm? Okay. Pull it out. It's heavy. <laughs> I hope so. You paid a lot of money for it. Okay. So this is our cauliflower. This, um, this is a nice little cruciferous vegetable. It's not quite as potent as the others because obviously it doesn't have any of the chlorophyll in there but it does have a high boron content and it won't grow in the soil that uh, in soil that doesn't have boron so if you eat cauliflower you get plenty of your boron 